welcome to the Bright Brewery here in Eisenberry. My name is Steele. I'm the mayor here as well as the founder of the Bright Brewing Company. And today we're going to go on a quick tour. We're going to show everything on the facility, how to do all the steps along the way to make your own brew and throw in some useful tips and tricks along the way. So quick disclaimer, I'm going to use the term brewing a lot in this, but don't be confused with the vanilla brewing of potions. This, that would actually be referred to as alchemy here. What I'm doing with brewing is more uh, the custom plug-in where we make drinks, uh, alcoholic or not. But everything starts over here in the fermentation room. So the main steps to brewing are going to be fermentation, distillation, aging, and then sealing. But everything starts, regardless of the recipe, right here in fermenting. So what you do, first of all, to set up is you will need to have a cauldron over top of a heat source. Now, any heat source uh, should work. There's a number of different things. My favorite is the magma block, although campfires work as well. I just like the magma block because it doesn't give off particles and it or noise. So it's uh, less less in the way. It's easier to see what you're doing, in my opinion. But hey, you do you, whatever whatever you prefer. But anyway, uh, once you get your cauldron on top of a heat source, what you do is grab an ingredient item. In this chest, I have most of the different items which are used. You can take a look if you want. Um, but what you do then is place the ingredients inside of the cauldron by right clicking on it. And you'll hear that noise and you'll see particles start to come off of it. So once that's done, uh, you'll simply wait. Uh, your recipes can have more than one ingredient. The time will vary. The way that you check the time is actually by using a clock and right clicking on the cauldron. So when you click on it, it will tell you in the chat log how long it's been going for. Anything under two minutes, it'll just say that it started to boil. And then anything after that, it'll give you the exact minute. But keep in mind, very useful to know that it's not a rolling timer. It doesn't start at zero seconds. The moment you place something in, it actually keeps track continually. So it could go off at 45 seconds after the minute. And so if you place something in the cauldron at 41 seconds after the minute, it will only take four seconds for it to hit one minute. So that may throw you off if you're not expecting it. I would also recommend in this room having a infinite water source. Mine is right here in the corner, so I can simply grab my buckets and then fill up my cauldrons between batches. Uh, definitely very useful. Over here, I have a lectern for my recipe book. Definitely uh, something that you would want to have if you're trying to not remember 44 different recipes. It doesn't matter how good your memory is, that's going to be a little too much. And the last thing I would recommend is having some sort of source of milk. I have a mood from uh, down here in the little trap door. Uh, he likes it, don't worry about it. Uh, but that is going to be useful because milk is an ingredient in a lot of these recipes. And rather than filling up an entire chest full of uh, milk buckets, it's easier just to have one infinite source right there. Uh, but anyway, we take a look over here at this cauldron, you see the particles have changed colors. That means that it's been at least a minute and the ingredient placed in there has started to take effect. Uh, so if I check the time, it says it's at three minutes already. Even though it feels close to the two, I must have placed it in close to the cutoff. But anyway, once you have your mixture all done and fermented to the desired time, you simply take some empty bottles and you right click on it and you can get three bottles per cauldron. One thing to keep in mind with the ingredients is that some of those are actually mixtures themselves which can be placed back into the cauldron. So for example, I use a sweet berry and what I got as a mixture was grape must. 
though, this grape must can actually be placed back into a recipe itself for later breakdown and distillate uh, and fermentation. So, uh, definitely useful to know. Also, some finished drink, such as vodka, gin, uh, whiskey, they can also be used as ingredients, especially when you're making some of the cocktail recipes, like whiskey sour for an old fashioned. So keep that in mind, uh, so that way you know all the different things that can be used as uh, ingredients. Once you have your mixture done over here, for some recipes that will be it, mostly the non-alcoholic ones, they will simply be done after you take it out of the cauldron, and there won't be any next step. But most recipes will require either distillation and or aging. If we move over here across the aisle, this is the distillation room. So over here in this setup, all you really need is a brewing stand with a glowstone dust placed in it as a filter, so to speak. If you take a look in this one here, you'll see that's all I have. There may be blaze powder in here from my leftover alchemy, but that's not required. All you need is a glowstone dust, and don't worry, that is not consumed. So you just need the one dust uh, that will be good for infinity as many batches as you want to brew. I also in this corner I have a hopper as a four drain because you can drain out any bad batches that you want to get rid of rather than throwing away the whole bottle or being forced to drink it to reuse the bottle. You can simply crouch and click on the hopper and dispose of the drink and save your bottle. So that's a very useful tip. Uh, but for the distillation, this process is really only going to be needed for the stronger drinks, more of your liquors, uh, such as vodka or absinthe, the things that really have a high alcohol content. And you'll get anywhere from one to six distill runs uh, in those recipes that require it. Nothing can go in for more than six, uh, at least not that I have heard or seen of. But anyway, uh, the distill time itself can vary. Some, some mixtures will distill in a quick 10 seconds, but most of them take about a minute. Some are longer, closer to two minutes, um, but nothing too varied. Like I said, two minutes is usually about the maximum. Some are quicker, most are quicker. And then once they go through the distillation, you'll see what the name comes up as because at that point, it'll still just have a generic mixture name once it comes out of the cauldron. Um, let's see. So, next up, I have aging. If you take a look over in this room, I have a bunch of barrels set up. These come in two sizes. Over here, you see the small ones. They're really stacked on top of each other. This is where I do a lot of my testing and small batches. But if you take a look, it's simply uh, one of these small sections here. It only takes eight stairs in a plus sign uh, type of configuration. And then you need the sign as well. The sign only needs the top line that says barrel. I added the, the wood type and that line up below it as decoration and a little bit of... Uh, to help me keep track, but that's the only thing that's needed. Just that top line that says barrel. Same thing over here on the big ones. Uh, these actually hold 27 slots if you take a look in here, whereas the small ones hold nine slots. And the wood types themselves from lightest to darkest to go in this order I have birch, oak, jungle, spruce, acacia, dark oak. Now, that does matter, the darkness of the wood, because that will actually depend. A lot of recipes require a specific wood type. So something that requires oak, you might still be able to get a good quality drink if you put it in a similar one, such as jungle or birch. But if you put that into a dark one, like acacia or dark oak, it simply will be a lot lower quality. Um, and then another thing to note, as far as the actual time that is required for aging, it's broken down into years, but don't be worried, you don't actually have to wait that long because every year 
age is actually only equal to one in-game day, which is 20 minutes at the normal 20 TPS, 60 per second. Um, so with that, I believe the shortest recipe only calls for about one year or two years, and then the longest one that I know of at the moment is a little over 20 years. So some of these can be sitting in a barrel for over eight hours or about eight hours uh, real time. Do keep in mind that the aging will slow down if TPS is lower. Say we have a high traffic hour, a lot of people on that day. Uh, what can happen is at a lower TPS, it could take longer than 20 minutes per year. So that's one thing to keep in mind if your timing isn't working out. It's not that you're not necessarily making a mistake, it's just that the TPS is a little bit lower and you should account for that. If you find that you don't have enough time to be there the whole time for the aging process and you need to leave for a long amount of time and it will be bad by the time you return, simply take it out and put it in a chest. Uh, that way it doesn't age any further. The standard barrel block itself does also age, so be careful not to use that. Uh, but the, the real reason you don't want to use it is because it doesn't have a wood type associated with it. So you'll ruin a lot of your recipes that need aging by putting it in that type because it'll just be a lower quality, it'll be the wrong wood type. Um, but anyway, uh, the final step before you are all done would be stealing. Once you have removed your drink from the, uh, from the barrel or you're done distilling it, whatever the last step was for that recipe, before you finish it off, you'll want to seal it in one of these workstations. These are actually called brew sealing tables, and while they look like a smoker, they're custom crafted with four planks over uh, underneath two empty bottles. So you'll use that recipe to make these. They have that custom name and a, and a nine spot inventory, and then you simply place your drink inside of it, wait a couple seconds, and then it gives you a sound effect and it seals it. That's important for a couple reasons. Number one, it will stop you from being able to make any changes to the drink. So if you get a five star drink, you're all done, and then you accidentally store it in a barrel later, you could ruin it by accident. Uh, so that will stop you from being able to make any changes to it. But the big thing here is that this is what allows you to sell them if you plan on setting up a bar, for example. Because any small change in the recipe throughout any of the processes, even though it may look identical and have all the same stats and all of the same ratings, you could end up actually having different item IDs as though the shop chest that we use here won't recognize them as the same, even though visually they are. And that can be as simple as just having one minute difference in the staging time. So make sure that you do this. Uh, it'll give everything the same item ID that has the same name and the same recipe uh, and the same star rating. So very useful. Uh, it's a must if you're going to be selling.